Hey guys, James here with Zenith Firearms, bringing you today's training tip, where I'll be covering sight adjustment and zero across our roller delayed platform of weapons. Okay, one of my favorite things about the roller delayed platform of weapons is the awesome sighting system that they have on them. Unlike many current designs, uh, where sights are either omitted completely or really just an afterthought, uh, this hooded front sight and rear diopter drum setup is really a, among the best uh, accuracy and robustness of any sighting system available today. So let's get into what tools and the process you'll need in order to affect sight adjustment and zero of your weapon. Now the process for zeroing and adjusting your sights is pretty much the same on each one of our platform of weapons, but the actual rear sight diopter drum is slightly different. So let's start here with our rifle caliber options, this one being a Z43P. What you'll notice on the rear sight diopter drum is that it actually has numbers, starting here with number one and then rotating to two, three, and four. What those numbers relate to is an actual uh, distance uh, for zero of 100 meters, 200, 300, or 400. So the shooter would estimate his range to target and then set his sights on whatever that distance would be. But you have to affect your actual zero first, which would include the adjustment of elevation through this di diopter drum. Here on our Z5RS line, what you'll notice is a similar diopter drum, but instead of numbers marking distances, what you have instead is a larger peep aperture. Uh, so starting on the smallest setting and then rotating around to slightly larger settings. And what that allows the shooter to have is more or less light entering in through that peep sight. So for instance, if I was gonna zero the weapon, I'd wanna have it on as smallest or tightest setting for precision accuracy. Whereas if I was shooting in a low light condition, I would adjust my diopter to the largest setting to allow the most light back in through the sight. On our Z5P and Z5K line of weapons, they come standard with what we call our castle sight, um, set up exactly the same as the diopter drum sight in its ability to rotate and provide you smaller or larger apertures. But instead of using a peep sight, this uses more of a traditional pistol style sight here in its smallest setting, and then rotating around to a much larger capacity into its widest setting. Now, if, if you'd rather have the larger uh, capacity peep style diopter drum off the Z5RS line, that can be swapped out uh, on this sighting system as well. Okay, so let's get into the sight adjustment and zero process. And I'll start that by stating where we actually set our zero points for. For our nine millimeter platform weapons, we recommend a zero of 25 meters. And for our rifle caliber offerings, 100 meters. What that means is at that distance, your point of aim, what you're aiming at, and your point of impact, the strike of the rounds, will be the same exact point. Any distance before or after that will either be higher or lower uh, based off a of bullet drop. Now that's not to say you can't make your zero any specific distance you want. Um, for example, if you were into competition shooting and the majority of your targets were at a 15 meter distance, you might zero your weapon for 15 meters uh, to make sure that your point aim and point impact were the same point every time at that distance. Uh, but the recommendation of 25 or 100 meters is simply based off the optimal performance of that weapon and that cartridge at those distances. So to demonstrate sight adjustment and zero process, we're gonna use our training aid here of our rear sight base, and the tool you're gonna need is the sight adjustment tool. Okay, the sight adjustment tool is actually two tools in one. It's a Phillips head screwdriver on one end, and then a spring cylinder on the other end. We'll get into that more here in a moment. And then the key points to look at for the rear sight base are your set screw, your windage adjustment screw, and then your elevation drum here on the top. All adjustments for windage and elevation are done on the rear sight. There's no adjustment whatsoever on the front sight. And we like to use an acronym of LLC to keep this process in mind. LLC stands for low, left, and clockwise. And what that means is you're always moving the strike of the round towards your target. If I needed to move my elevation low, I would move 
a clockwise turn on my elevation drum. If I needed to move the strike of the rounds to the left, I would make a clockwise turn on the windage adjustment screw to the, uh, to, to the left. In the opposite, if I wanted to go up in elevation, I would make a counterclockwise turn, and if I needed to go to the right, I would make a counterclockwise turn there on our windage screw. Now, whether we're referring to the nine millimeter platform with a 25 meter zero recommendation, or the rifle caliber options and a 100 meter uh, zero recommendation, the distance um, equation would be about two inches on target for every 360 degree turn of either the windage screw or the elevation drum. So what that means is if I was four inches to the left on windage, then I would make two complete turns on my windage screw. And if I was three inches low on my elevation drum, then I would make one full turn and then a half turn in order to get to that point. So to affect a sight adjustment for the windage, either left or right, the first thing we'll wanna do is make sure we have our sight adjustment tool with the Phillips head screwdriver portion. And we'll go ahead and loosen up our set screw here on the top of the sight base. Once that's been loosened up, now you'll take your tool and mount it into the windage adjustment screw. And you'll make that adjustment turn either in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction, whichever way you want to bring the strike of the rounds and you're moving that rear sight in the direction that you want the rounds to go. Okay, once you're complete, you'll just simply tighten back down that set screw. Now for adjustments in elevation, we're gonna need to use our side adjustment tool, the combination of both your Phillips head screwdriver and the spring cylinder tool. And as you see, when you connect them, the spring detents actually move in and out depending on whether you're in the open or closed position. Now I want you to pay close attention to inside the center of our elevation drum. And you'll notice there's four separate notches, but specifically pay attention to these two spring-loaded detents, one here and one there. Those spring-loaded detents are what allow the clicking sound and action to happen as you rotate your cylinder around. Under pressure as they rotate, the spring tension forces them in, allows you to move the drum and then out of pressure, they extend back out again, locking you in position. The key is to interface these two detents on our spring cylinder with those two detents on the inside of the sight base. So the process goes like this. Attach your tool, your sight tool together, and then align it straight down on top of those detents, and you'll feel it fall into position. So at this point, the tips of the spring cylinder tool are sitting over top and just to the outside of the two spring-loaded detents. So with downward pressure of your thumb and your forefinger, you're simply going to remove the Phillips head screwdriver portion of the side adjustment tool. The clicking position shows that now those tips on the spring cylinder tool have actually captured the outside of those spring-loaded detents and reinserting and fully forcing downward position of the Phillips head screwdriver now forces those spring-loaded detents inside. And removing your left hand, you can now spin the elevation drum freely in either direction. There are no longer any clicks stopping it. Now you can make the elevation adjustment that you need to in order to bring the strike of the rounds back to the, your point of aim on target. So again, using LLC, low left clockwise, if I needed to bring the strike of the rounds down, I would turn the elevation drum clockwise. If I needed to bring the strike of the rounds up, I would rotate it counterclockwise. Once I've gotten to the appropriate amount of turns, I simply remove the sight tool out of position and reset the aperture setting, and you'll hear it click back into place. At any point in this process, if you spin the wheel and you feel the resistance and the clicking take place, it just means that you haven't actually engaged those spring-loaded detents with the spring cylinder tool. Just start the process over, realign yourself, and you'll be able to affect that change. So Paul's about to conduct his zero, and the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we've got that rear diopter drum set on the correct aperture setting. As you can see here, we've got it on the largest setting for low light, so we're just gonna rotate it to the smallest setting for precision accuracy.
Okay, so here we are down here at the 25 meter line and we're assessing Paul's first uh, grouping for zero. As you can see here, we've got five shots all in a good tight group and they're low and to the left of our initial target point. So his point of aim was here, his point of impact was there. As we make our side adjustments to, to correct our zero, we want to move the strike of the rounds towards our, our target. So we want to move our point of impact towards our point of aim. So for zero, we're going to use our acronym of LLC, low left clockwise. And what that means is if we want to move our shots higher, that would be the opposite of low. So the opposite of clockwise would be counterclockwise. So I'm going to make adjustments on the elevation in a counterclockwise direction in order to bring that strike of the rounds higher instead of lower. Okay, so how do we do that? We're going to go ahead and measure these off and we're about three inches low. So I need to bring my elevation up three inches. At 25 meters, an effective rotation of 360 degrees is going to give us a two inch change. Okay, so if I need to go three inches, then I'm gonna to need to make one full 360 degree turn on our elevation knob to give me two inches and then another half turn to get that extra inch I need for a full three inches. And we're gonna do that in the counterclockwise rotation. Okay, then if I look here, we're probably around four inches off to the left of windage. So again, using LLC, low left clockwise, I see if I want to move my adjustment um, to the right, not left, but bring the strike of the rounds to the center, to the right, I'm going to make the opposite of clockwise, which would be a counterclockwise turn on my windage screw. And again, four inches, two inches being one 360 degree rotation at 25 meters. I'm gonna do two full rotations on that windage screw in the counterclockwise direction in order to bring the strike of the rounds back towards my target point. So we'll go back here to our shooting point. We'll make those adjustments on the rear sight, and then we'll make another confirmation grouping here to see if we're right on target for our zero. Okay, so here we are back at the 25 meter line after Paul has taken his second confirmation grouping. You can see the first shots, he made his adjustments, now he's brought himself up onto target. And I don't even need this tape measure anymore because his grouping is so close to being on point, we're really only about a half inch off the of center. So we'd make one more adjustment of about a quarter turn up on that rear elevation drum to be right on target. I hope you enjoyed this video and the information that's been presented and that it gives you an appreciation that once you understand the how and the why behind zero process, you're gonna get the optimal performance out of your weapon. Here at Zenith, we believe in our products and the solutions they provide.